We're back here at the Tulsa Arms Show with some special editions of the Curator's Corner. My friend Jim Sapika, director of the National Farms Museum, is here with me. He's digging up treasures, and he's brought a friend back, Dan Cole, with Cole's Old Town Station, armsbid.com. And Dan brought so many neat things with him, you want to bring him back to the table. Now, uh, Jim, what do we have here? This is a very interesting-looking firearm here. Well, we talked just a little bit ago about how the Smith & Wesson new model number three dominated revolver target competition. But there was a market for a fine single shot 22 target firearm as well. And Smith and Wesson took their successful top brake design revolver and adapted it to a single shot. This is the third model of their single shot pistol. Like the revolver, it's a top brake. Uh, opens just like that, as you can see. Has the little uh, the eject. ejector extractor. Uh, loads right there. And uh, it's just simply a revolver with the cylinder and barrel removed and replaced by this in-block uh, cylinder and uh, uh, filler there. And they were successful, very accurate guns. This one is interesting. The first two models were single action only. This was based on a double action revolver frame. Wow. So it's actually a single shot pistol that can be fired either double action by pulling all the way through Whoa. or single Whoa. action by cocking first Jeez. and then firing it. Now, of course, target competition, you would never shoot double action. Yeah. But that was the model they were working from. Right. The platform. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and these target guys, they were shooting the classic one-handed, slow-fire target, uh, did, demanded a very steady hand, and one concern they had was that the arc of that hammer while it fell, that small mass moving in an arc, would throw their, frame, uh, throw their aim off. Right. And they wanted a gun that fired, uh, that, where you wouldn't have that swinging little piece of metal, Smith & Wesson was eager to please, and they came up with a, the fourth model single shot that we also have an example of that Dan brought for us. And here it is. Now, that looks like an auto pistol, doesn't it? Sure does. It's yeah. not. It's a single shot pistol. It, uh, it's a side swing Ooh, look at that. design. <laughs> side swing like that. As you can see, there's no magazine in the butt. That's just a solid frame. But the idea with this, and it has to be hand cocked for each shot, but you pull the firing pin mechanism back like that. Jeez. And then it fires in a straight line. They call this their straight line model. Oh, yeah. The firing pin goes down straight. You don't have that little swing of an arc. So you don't have the, yeah. the, you yeah. have the curvature there. Now mm -hmm. this, was, this was not wildly successful, but they were trying to address an issue for target shooters, uh, trying to produce a fine target arm. And uh, uh, of course, Smith & Wesson has a long reputation with target shooters of uh, it's uh, being an outstanding competition pistol, but this is early 20th century. Back then, uh, late 19th, early 20th century, uh, target shooting was America's sport. It was mm -hmm. like football today. They'd report the results in the newspaper, and large groups of people would come to watch shooting matches. So uh, uh, these were very big uh, uh, target guns in an important area in American target shooting history. And it's great to see just like today the way the manufacturers work on the feedback from the competitors and try to, even if that model may have been that wildly successful, try to make something that works mm -hmm. better for exactly. them. Exactly. It's awesome. Well, Dan, thanks so much for bringing so much wonderful stuff Thank over you. for us today. And, and Jim, thanks for another great segment of the Curator's Corner right here from Wanamaker Tulsa Arms Show. We'll be back with more.